for joining everybody. So we're gonna get started here in a second. Um, and all we're doing is starting on our backs. I have that blue mat there for a pillow initially for my head, uh, but initially, and then it's gonna uh, get put underneath my knee. So um, all we're doing is dropping back onto our backs. Make sure you guys can see me here. Okay, and let's make sure y'all can hear me. Hey, here we go. All right, so first things first, we're gonna be starting on our backs. And we're gonna be working on our obliques, our abdominals, muscles in the front of our body, including our hip flexors, because we keep them short all day. They don't know when to turn on, when to turn off. So the body kind of just says, hey, let's just kind of keep them short. And so we're gonna actually extend our legs and you're gonna be palms up. And you're gonna engage your core. It's gonna be ready for someone to drop a bowling ball on you. And from here, you're gonna lift up into what we call a tabletop position. It's more of a Pilates center. And then you're gonna go back down. And you wanna make sure that when you do that, your ribs don't flare up. To do this, we engage our trunk. Everything is nice and stable. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, sorry. Okay, here we go. All right. So, we're gonna come up and go down. And we're using our hip flexors to go up and down. And all we're doing is eight of these guys. And I think I got three left. And we're keeping our ribs down. Our back is stable. It doesn't have to get pressed down into the floor. And we're just gonna do one more. All right, and I think I've got someone trying to come into here. Let's see here. Who's trying to? All right. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now we're gonna pop down into a hip flexor stretch. So we've told our hip flexors when to turn on and when to turn off. Because when we sit around, we keep them really short all day, they kind of just get the signal to, to do nothing. And so we tell them when to turn on by lifting our knees, and then we tell them when to turn off so they have an opportunity to relax. And so we're going to use that momentary refractory period where they're like, oh, I don't have to do anything. And we're going to tuck your toes in back. You're going to put your knee down on something soft. You're going to tuck your pelvis, and then come up. We're just stretching out the front of our uh, hips because our hip flexors go from our femur, or our thigh bone, they go through our abdomen and attach to our low back. And so if we keep them tight or allow them to get really tight, when we go to stand up, we're gonna be in this anterior pelvis position, which can cause compression and irritation and cause muscle spasms in the back. And so it's not something that we wanna encourage you to do. So we tuck and come up and feel that stretch in the front. So we've got a couple more seconds. But if this isn't enough stretch, you can go ahead and reach back and be nice and tall. You just don't want to lean back, adding to the compression in your, uh, in your lumbar spine, in your low back. And so we're going to go to the other side. Now I'm going to do that second variation, but the rest of you can just make sure you tuck your toes, working on that big toe mobility. We talk so much, and we always talk about it on hip and knee day, because it's so important to everything else above the chain. So you might as well work on mobility when you can. You tuck your hips, you come up, you feel the stretch. And I actually feel a little bit more stretch on this side, but I'm still gonna do this guy. Get a little bit more quad, a little bit more hip flexor stretch. And we're just here for a minute. I love holding my stretches for a minute because a bunch of research I read years ago and then every year after says that holding a stretch between one and five minutes is the most effective. And if you can fire the muscle that's on the opposing side of the muscle you're trying to stretch, so here if I'm firing my glute, squeezing my glute, I'm gonna get even more stretch in my hip flexor. It's called reciprocal inhibition. You fire one muscle on the side of the joint, the opposite side of the joint can be given a signal to kind of shut down and relax. And so we're trying to stretch our hip flexors, and so we wanna squeeze our glute to tell them to relax a little bit more. Just hang out here for one minute, 
And we're actually going to do something that's unheard of in my world, and that's do another stretch right after a hip flexor stretch. It's just where it fits nicely in today's program, so we can kind of hit the ground running with all of the stability and uh, mobility exercises uh, today. Okay, and so the stuff that we're doing today is going to kind of be a combination of mobility, strengthening, stability, all in one, because we're going to need certain mobility to do the movements that we're, we're going to try to achieve, because these are developmental positions, we need to kind of earn that next step. And so some of these things might be mobility for some people, and they might be stability for others. Before we do that, we're just going to do a very basic figure four posterior hip stretch, piriformis stretch um, is another name for it, but you're going to be on your back. You're going to cross one ankle over your opposite knee. From here, you're going to reach behind your thigh and pull it up towards your head. And once again, we're just here for a minute. Some of you might say, you know what, Mike, this hurts my knee. And so if that's the case, you're going to lower your leg and you're just going to pull your knee up and across your body, still stretching out the back of your head. But for the rest of us, we're just here laying our head down, getting a nice little stretch for another 30 seconds or so. Getting ready to do some more oblique abdominal core stability, anterior chain, whatever you want to call it, exercises that can help kind of calm the back side of your body down and help with making it so the activities you do, like exercising, or maybe you're a, a nurse or a nurse assistant and you have to do lots of transfers and lifting, you want to have a really stable trunk so you can withstand the loads of those patients or people or whatever you're picking up. All right, we're going to switch sides. So your knee, or excuse me, ankle is going over your knee and then you're pulling up. And you're keeping your back nice and flat. And we're just going to be here for a minute. I feel this one way more than my left side. If you really want to get adventurous, you can push your knee away. Maybe that gets you a little bit more stretch too. And we're just hanging out. Just one minute. Hanging, hanging, hanging. And we've got about 20 seconds left. Just going to check one thing on my phone really quick, and then we are going to go through these strength and mobility and stability exercises. This is a pretty good one. I fully expect to break a sweat today. So if you've got a towel or some water, if you don't have them, you might want to go grab them. All right. Oh, the backs of my hips, the front of my hips. My back already feels really good. Let's see here. We got quite the crew here. All right. Nice. All right. Let's see here. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. So we're going to be on our back. We're going to be going through some developmental positions, things that, you know, we're going to start off with what three month olds can do. And it's really going to work on our obliques, our abdominals, in our internal spinal stabilizing system, the muscles, the little guys that go around the spine, often ignored. Um, by the big lifts that we do, but with these small little movements, we can actually get them to fire and engage, um, as long as we achieve what we're, what we're looking for. So the first thing that we're doing is actually called a three-month toe touch. And so we're going to go on our backs, and then we're going to progress to a six-month toe touch. And we did these a couple weeks ago, but I feel like they fit nicely within today's program, and you'll see why. So we did these guys. What's that? What? We paused. Okay. So we're on our backs. We started with these guys, which is what one and two month old little babies can do, and we're going to hold that position. From here, three month olds will start to grab for their feet. So they'll come up here. And we're working on those obliques. We're working on our neck strength too. We're going to try to touch ten times. And I have my knees turned out a little bit. Okay, I'm not just, I'm not here, I'm actually turned out just a little bit with my knees. And so I'm going up and down, I'm touching 12 times. I think I'm at about halfway there. Seven, eight, nine. If you need to take a break, take a break. We've got two more. 
10, 11, and 12. Okay. So maybe some of you were like, whoa, that was way harder than a crunch or a sit up. But what you might find is that you're actually not going through a very big range of motion. When I bring my legs down, I'm only lifting my head and shoulders a little bit. And so I'm not a huge fan of a full sit up because of the stresses that it puts on our discs and the other structures of our lumbar spine. But if I bring my legs up and I just touch, it makes it so I don't have to make a huge movement. I don't have to flex my spine as much, but I can still work on all those muscles. And if I'm breathing while I do this, I know I'm not using my lungs for support, then my deep spinal stabilizing system has to be working. I'm forcing it to work. It's a reflex. If it's not working, you're probably not standing. So we're going to skip ahead a few months, because at six months, we start to reach across our body. And this is where we start to really develop oblique control that can then help us roll and get up, and then we can start to crawl and to walk. And so we're setting a foundation for how we can move later. But for us, with back pain, we might need some oblique control to help us, once again, support our trunk when we're lifting and moving. And so we're up here again. I've got my hands up. Now I'm going to alternate now, touching my left hand to my right ankle and my right to my left. Now I'm going to go through 10 on each side, so 20 total. You get a little bit of rotation. Breathing while I do it, can't hold my breath while I do this, or I'm not going to get a lot of movement. And I'm not going to train my spine the way we want. Once again, you might be feeling this in your neck, but your neck is part of your spine. It's part of your core. You need to have nice, strong, but mobile necks as well. I think I got one more. Okay, and I need to give myself a little break here. And we'll just talk. We're going to go a little off base and do another core stabilization exercise that takes us through a little bit of hip extension or opens our hips a little more because we've had our hips bent so long. I want to make sure that we kind of open them up again before we move on. Okay, so this is a little tactical here. We're going to be using our trunk, but we're still going to be lengthening out our hip flexors with a very basic dead bug or dying bug. I think people are starting to call it dying bug because dead bugs don't move. But you're going hands up towards the ceiling, knees, above your hips, bent to 90 degrees. I'm gonna reach my right arm back, and my left leg out. And then back to where I started. I'm just gonna make 10 on each side, stretching out that long hip, stretching out my shoulders, relaxing my neck. Good, all right. And I think that's four, we got six more to go. Now, I'm not trying to necessarily peg my back down to the ground, but I'm trying to prevent my ribs from flaring, and I'm trying to prevent movement in my trunk, okay? So I'm not trying to really flatten my back too much, but I'm not trying to let all this movement occur in my ribs. And I think I got two more on each side. And if you were struggling with those six month toe touches, this is an also a great substitute. All right, one more. All right. Okay, so those last two exercises were really good at waking up our, our obliques. Our obliques cross our body, helping us create rotation, but also prevent extension and create flexion. These are all things that we need to roll. Rolling is important because then we can get into crawling, to standing, and to walking when we're, when we're little kids. So we're going to go from that same tabletop position, we're going to roll into a side plank. So we're going to be working on some shoulder stability, some hip stability, and trunk stability all at the same time. But to roll, we also need good thoracic mobility. And so this might also help you gain some thoracic mobility if you were lacking. So I'm going to be rolling from on my back to on my right side five times, then I'm going to turn over and I'm going to go to my left side five times as well. To do this, maybe you want to watch me do a rep if you've missed this in the past. You're going to that same tabletop position. I'm actually going to lift my head a little bit. I'm going to put my 
forearm, or excuse me, my upper arm down in the direction I want to go. So I'm going to go to my right. So that elbow's going down, and my hand is going to face away from me. So from here, I start rolling onto my side, push myself up, and I'm into a side plank. And I'm getting lots of good hip extension on that bottom leg. And then I'm going back down. And you'll see this is, there's lots of control here. I'm not just flying through this using momentum. I'm using my obliques. I'm using my spinal stabilizers. I'm using my hips. And I'm talking so I know I'm breathing. If I was turning bright red, there'd be an issue. And I know I'd be holding my breath, using my lungs for stability. And I think I have one more. And if you need to, you can keep this hip down. I like working on both hips, so I keep it up abducted so I can use my glute a little bit more. We'll go one more. And I'm up. I'm nice and tall and long through my chest. Good. Now I'm going to come down. We're going to the other side. Working on our other obliques and hip flexors and shoulder stabilizers and all that good stuff. Just like little kids will do. Somewhere between six and eight months. Rolling. And they usually don't stop here. They usually will come here and then start crawling. And that's going to be our next move. Here, rolling. Up. It's really squeezing that bottom glute. Our glutes are extremely important in protecting our backs. They should be doing the lifting movements, the high velocity movements, thrusting the jumping, all that stuff, so our low backs don't have to, because our glutes should be the strongest muscles in our body, and the biggest by volume, they should be, and they can help get, produce lots of athletic explosive movements. So once again, we've set all these things in place, we've used our obliques, and there with the side plank, we started to incorporate some shoulder stability, and some hip stability. And now we're going to put all these things together to crawl on our hands and knees. So our knees are going to be down. This is technically something called creeping. Crawling actually occurs when our knees are off the ground, but we'll just call it prone. We're going to be crawling with a reciprocal pattern, which means that when my left hand goes forward, my right knee goes forward. It is exactly how we walk. So we're starting to establish good, reflexive, motor control in our spine, in our hips, in our chest that we're going to need for walking later. And sometimes, after an injury, after a lot of low back pain, people will kind of waddle around, they'll lose rotation, they'll lose their reciprocation with walking and crawling. If you can get somebody to buy into it, can reestablish those patterns, it can get people's backs to relax because reflexively, you have to tell one side of your body to turn on and the opposite to, to turn off, and vice versa, really quickly, beyond our thought, and therefore those muscles can kind of chill out and maybe come out of the spasm that they're in. And so to do this, we're, we're, we can be doing forward, walk, or forward crawling and backwards crawling, or you can do just forwards and turn around and then go back. My space here is a little bit limited, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna be on your hands and knees, you're gonna have your toes tucked under your back, and as my hand goes forward, my opposite knee goes forward. And then the same thing here. And here, and here, and I'm going off screen, I'm gonna run into this bike, and then I'm gonna actually go backwards. And what's really interesting is that 50% of kids learn to crawl backwards first. So a lot of parents will say, hey, my kid does this, it's a little weird. And I say, well, it's just as weird as crawling forward for the first time. And we're gonna actually use the backwards crawl in a minute to get into a squat. It's a lot easier than crawling forwards and getting into a squat. We're just gonna go for about a minute or so. And I'm just back and forth. And if your wrists are bothering you, maybe you just wanna make sure that your elbow pits, these guys right here, are facing forward as you do it. That might take some of the pressure out of your wrist. It might not take all of it. I'm not gonna suggest you army crawl on your forearms, although it is possible it can put a little bit of strain on your low back if you do get down into this position and crawl. It is possible, but it might put a little bit more strain in your low back if you're having issues. So we'll finish off here. Elbow pits facing forward, getting not nice mobility in my wrists and in my toes. And backwards. And then we're gonna kinda progress 
this hands and knees position, we're going to do some shoulder touches, which is going to help solidify our shoulder stability, but really challenge our oblique slings again. These guys that come across our body, creating tons of stability, but also helping us rotate when we need it. To do this, we're going to go hands and knees to start. You're going to have your knees underneath your hips, hands underneath your uh, shoulders. And uh, once again, if you're struggling to be on your wrists, what you can do is grab maybe a stool or a bunch of pillows or something, and you can actually be here. We're still going to be challenging our shoulder girdles and our obliques with this, and you'll see what I mean by this in a second. But you're going to pop your knees up, and they're going to be underneath your hips, and then you're going to alternate touching your shoulders. And you don't want any rotation to be occurring at your hips. We're trying to prevent any movement from occurring in our trunk because we want to encourage stability or a little bit of rigidity, stiffness in our trunk with this drill so we can move our proximal joints a little bit later when we start to bear crawl or really crawl for that matter. And so we're alternating, not letting any movement occur in our trunk. 10 on each side, I think I'm at five. And you can put a water bottle, a foam roller, a yoga block, something on your low back to give you a little cue to know that you're moving or not moving. And I got one more. And 10, you can hear me huffing and puffing because that's tough. If you want to make that modification, if your wrists are and you're here, you just lift and lift and you're still going to have to stabilize your trunk. So it's not that big of a difference there. But this is where there might be a difference. And you might want to stay there if your wrists are uncomfortable. But we're going to be crawling, true crawling, knees off the ground crawling. You want to have a nice, stable back. I'm going to grab a uh, yoga block so I can put this on my back and get a little feedback. Am I rocking my hips a lot? Maybe I don't have good um, kinesthetic sense of what my hips are doing, maybe I need this for feedback. And so I'm going to be here, we're getting that same position. We've got knees under hips, wrists under uh, shoulders. And we pop up and we walk. Or crawl, excuse me, crawl, 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 crawl. And then we're going backwards. And if I was all sloppy in my hips, 